I know yoga is one of the very favorite activities that you have. Yeah. Can you talk about how it directly relates to swimming and core strength? Yoga has given me the ability to become a lot more flexible, which I think is very important. And it's given me strength in different terms than weight has. And I think that it's given me core strength. I think it's given me, you know, I'm working different types of muscles than I don't than I do in the weight room. And I think that it's given me just kind of the peace of mind. In your opinion, what's the most important things in order to be a great swimmer? You have to be strong mentally. I think belief in yourself is the ultimate. And, and no matter what you're doing, not necessarily just in swimming, but in everything. And I think that if you believe in yourself, you're going to go a long way. I think the ability to set goals, um, the ability to say no, the ability to rely on other people, I think that's important, you know, because you're not, nobody's successful by themselves. You have to rely on the people that help you. In the physical aspect, you know, you have to be strong. Yeah, I feel like you, the strength and flexibility is a huge issue. I think that you have to have proper technique, and, you know, I think, you think that having a little bit of talent probably helps. There's probably a lot of swimmers out there that have been doing the same time for a year or two. They've been on a plateau. You've had some plateaus in your career. I've had a few, yes. <laughs> Tell us, how do you break through a plateau? I think you need to give yourself the opportunity to realize that maybe you're not doing the right thing for your body, for yourself, that maybe you should try something different. You know, in high school, I went the same time for four years. You know, and when I got to college, it was just a change of scenery and more consistent training, and I dropped, you know, three or four seconds at a time. It takes a while to find out what works for you. And when you find it, you should stick with it. But don't give up easily. You've been very patient and very perseverant. Yes, you have to be very patient. Sometimes when, you know, people come away from, you know, a meet and they're like, why wasn't I better than I was at the last meet? It's not going to happen in two weeks. It's not going to happen, you know, it may not happen in a year. It may not happen in two years. It'll happen at the right time. Believe in yourself. Believe that you've done everything you possibly can and do everything you possibly can to make yourself the best you can be. That's good advice. Thanks. <laughs>
the water actually passes over the top of her head as her line is kept from her head down to her toes. Now when you put both the single arm drills together, you do what we call four and four drill. So you go four right arm, four left arm. So after you do the single arm drills, you go into this drill. You can do this elementary style with both hands above your head, or you can also do an advanced style with one arm down by your side. This drill basically is helping you work not only your hip rotation, the exact same things we did in the single arm drill, but now you have to switch from side to side and switch your breathing patterns from side to side. Again, on this drill, don't forget to kick because if you don't, you're going to sink. And if you get out of line, it's real easy to notice because you'll be swimming from side to side instead of swimming straight. This is the elementary single arm drill, but you're practicing rotating to both sides. You go four right arm, and then four left arm. Notice the hip rotation. Lindsay keeps very good leg skill going on while she does the single arm drill. It's easy to forget that a single arm drill is also a kicking drill. You have to concentrate on it because you're thinking about your arms. When you're breathing, you breathe to the side that your arm is down by your side. It makes it a lot harder, but it also makes you keep your breathing pattern in line, keeps your head in line, and you're, again, you're always looking towards the bottom of the pool. Again, on this drill, don't forget to kick, because if you don't, you're going to sink. She goes four right and then four left with exaggerated hip rotation. Note that she's exaggerating the body roll by rotating the opposite arm that she's not using out of the water. This is catch-up drill where you have both arms out in front and you take an arm stroke and hit your hand in front and then take another arm stroke. This is good also for body rotation and also in order to keep your stroke long. You know, when I swim freestyle, my stroke is very long, and this helps me minimize my stroke count per lap. And it also helps me focus on keeping my body position in line when I'm not stroking, just by using my legs. You can see she has a great wingspan, and she likes to get as much out of her stroke as possible. However, when you do this drill, it's still important to work on hip rotation and body balance. She does this drill maintaining good body balance by looking at the bottom of the pool. She gets full extension in front and full extension behind past her hips. This is catch up drill but using a pipe kind of as a little prop to help us mix it up a little bit and have a little fun in practice. You use the pipe to make sure that you're actually stopping your stroke and really focusing on your body position. And make sure you're looking down at the bottom of the pool and not at the pipe, because sometimes that can be a distraction. So make sure, again, that you're rotating your hips and you're really finishing your stroke on this drill, because sometimes you get you're a little tired by doing this, and if you don't finish your stroke, you're losing the focus. This is particularly good for Lindsay because she works on getting nice and extended in the front. However, even though you're extended, you must think about having a good high elbow catch on each stroke. I like to use this drill to help me with my high elbows. 
When you swim freestyle, you like to have high elbows on top of the water and underneath the water. A lot of people are getting away from this where they think that swimming with straight elbows is better for them. But in my case, you know, I like to swim with a long stroke, a very long body. And sometimes it gets out of whack if I don't use my high elbows underneath the water and on top of the water to advantage. On the fingertip drag drill, she drags her fingertips right on the surface of the water, close to the midline of her body, which makes her think about getting her elbows up high on the recovery, and she's trying to keep her body alignment so that her hips don't go out of line. really good for high elbow catch under the water, especially if you're using a straight arm stroke. You don't want to forget to use high elbow catch underneath the water. This is where you're going to get the most power through your stroke. As you reach out, you're turning your fingertips down towards the bottom of the pool and your elbow goes high up. And you make sure that your elbow is high up the entire way.